Douglas, Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to Krypton Report. Up in the sky, look! It's a plane! It's a plane! It's the Krypton Report! host Tyler and welcome to Krypton Report, a podcast dedicated to all things Superman, Supergirl. We're going to look at the Supergirl TV series as well as the Krypton TV series, anything that has to do with the characters in their world. Comics, movies, TV shows, we will talk about everything and anything. We are part of the Southgate Media Group Podcasting Network. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Krypton Report. You can also email us at kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. If you get a chance to go over to iTunes, Apple Podcast, please leave us a review to help us get better. You can find me personal at JTY Patrick on Twitter and everything else. You can buy a Krypton Report t shirt at tpublic.com. Check it out. They have all sizes, colors, styles of shirts. Just go to tpublic.com and search Krypton Report and you'll see our logo. And every time you buy a shirt, it helps support other podcasts from southgatemedia.com. Thank you. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the Krypton Report. I am your Superman Red, James Cole. And with me today is your host, as always, Superman Blue. Tyler Patrick. That's right. I'm here. How you doing? I'm not. I'm feeling under the weather. We've been moving the past few days, and we wanted to record because we had to keep rescheduling. So we're going to do our news, and James is going to lead today. So take it away, James. All right. Well, we've had a number of issues come up, number of news items come up. <clears throat> um. The one thing I want, the one thing I want to start off with first, um, how do you feel? You know, Teen Titans Go. Yep. Yes, Teen Titans Go. Um, they had cast some members of the Justice League, but, uh, they cast Superman and it's going to be Nicolas Cage. I'm happy for him. He'll finally get to play <laughs> Superman in some way. And I guess right? with as crazy as Nicolas Cage is, Teen Titans Go is the best platform for him to do this. Uh, yeah, I'm very interested. Uh, with his personality, it certainly matches. Um, I didn't really have a, you know, a desire to see that movie, but now I do. <laughs> right? Yeah, that actually does help. Uh, I was going to take my kids to see it. They like Teen Titans Go. Uh, it has its moments. <laughs> It's uh, extremely meta, but what are you going to do? It's it, it's very referential. Um, yeah, you know they reference they reference everything having to do with DC, and they're able to make fun of it. Um, you know it it has its moments. Um, Nicholas Cage was going to be Superman in Tim Burton's um, Superman Lives. Which they have actually done a documentary about. Which one day we're going to, one day we're going to review that. It's on the schedule at some point. We'll get there. We'll get there. Well, I actually still have to see that. Exactly. I, seen yet. I think what we <clears throat> do is I either need to come visit you or you guys need to come here now that we have this guest room that we're fixing up and we can just watch it. <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> Yeah, that is, that's definitely a reason for that's definitely a good reason for a trip. Exactly. It's only two and a half hours to Columbus. So that's it, not too bad. It's not too bad. In the, in the grand scheme of I think it took me three and a half to get to Phil. So beating Phil. Yeah. In closeness. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, all right. Uh, so, you know, next thing we got here, movie wise, Kristen Wiig. She has now. We talked before that she was in talks to be Cheetah on, uh, for Wonder Woman 2. And she has now been officially cast as Cheetah in Wonder Woman 2. You know, I'm kind of, I'm okay with it. I mean, she has never, I've never seen anything I've really liked her in. Like she was okay, funny and stuff, but there's never been anything where I'm like, 
I really like Kristen Wiig in that. And I've seen some of her other non-comedy stuff and more indie films. But I'm just like, whatever. We'll give it a shot. You mm. know what I'm saying? I'll give her a shot. Yeah. yeah. She does um, not well, a I'm definitely... I'm... It's not a character that I'm like, oh my gosh, if they screw this up, I'll be forever scarred. I'm like, eh. Oh, yeah, they pretty much have a clean slate with the character. Um I mean, I'm kind of in the similar boat, you know, with Kristen Wiig. Um, I mean, nothing she's done has been like, oh, wow, you know, like stand out. I know who she is. I, you know, she's had some leading, you know, leading roles, but uh, there's nothing I've hated her in either. So, you know, clean slate for the character and, a, you know, and, a, and an actress with some experience. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm interested. You know, lots of. At first, I was thinking, like, man, I hope they do some practical effects on her. That would be really cool. Um, they'll probably do majority performance capture. And I think, like, as we record this, people, Krypton is premiering. And we just don't have cable, so we'll talk about it tomorrow. Um, but yes, like, when we can stream it. <laughs> Brainiac, you know, is makeup on Krypton. And it looks really cool. And then I think about, like, Planet of the Apes how that mocap looks on the apes. So, right. I'm a, I got my hopes up, you know, I just want it to look good. I'm at a point. Yeah. I'm getting, burned, oh, absolutely. The- I'm getting burned out on CG. Um, cause I feel like it's right. getting used for everything to where I'm like, I feel like I'm watching animation sometimes more than I'm all watching. these big. Yeah. Right. All these big villains, they're all CG. Um, you know, I hope there's a good deal of practical, obviously, with um, her being a, a physical, uh, a strong physical opponent as well against Wonder Woman. There's going to be quite a bit of CGI um, when it comes to the action. But I hope a good bit of, you know, the physical performance comes through that it's not a Siren Hines Steppenwolf scenario where she doesn't even have to be on set. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, with the Cheetah, like they should use her face. <laughs> like I said, more Planet of the Apes, and also, um, what was I thinking of? Oh, like, a few years back, in 2012, when the Wolfman came out, like, Rick Baker's practical effects for the Wolfman look amazing. You know, I, I just, I yeah. miss, I love when CG, you don't realize it's CG, but sometimes, right. they just, instead of using CG to fill in the gaps, they do it too much. Like, I didn't realize for the longest time that all of Zod's armor and all of jor armor in Man of Steel was CG. Right. Well, you know, that's that's actually partly how they did uh, Iron Man early on. Yeah. You know, yeah. the Iron Man early on was, he, you know, there was some kind of suit, and they used the CG to fill in the gaps. It was you and know, then as it went, still war something. He got less and less. <laughs> Yeah, to the point where Robert Downey Jr. doesn't even have to be on set to, to film Iron Man stuff. Yeah, side note, that's why I said he could do this for the rest of his life. Just write a storyline where Tony's stuck in the suit and he can't get out. And then all he has to do is one day Robert Downey comes in, shoots in front of a green screen for the black, and does, and does all of his lines like a voiceover, and he's done. Anyway. Right. <laughs> Um, the only, the, the only last thing with Cheetah is, you know, I'm not too familiar with the character. I've seen a couple of designs, but Alex Ross design is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I read, I really I, liked recently when they did the rebirth Wonder Woman, how Wonder Woman came out every two weeks, but like week one was a current story. And then like week two was a f- flashback story. And they kept alternating like that. And they told a really good Cheetah story. In there. So if you get a chance to check out Rebirth Wonder Woman, um, to kind of get your hands wet on the more recent incarnation of Cheetah. Excellent. It's on the list. Um, and then, uh, just the Wonder Woman, they've got, uh, you know, they're, they're supposed to be starting to film in, in the UK in late May. Apparently there's going to be some, uh, possible shooting in the US, uh, probably around DC and Langley. That would make in sense. In Virginia. That would make sense. But I'm very curious about how, like, because technically Wonder Woman's supposed to be more in the shadows. So however she does this, like, it's going to be not a big thing, you know? Yeah. I kind of wonder if it's going to, if it's still going to be more like Black Ops, if, 
if the perhaps the Steve Trevor, I guess, of the supposed 80s is when the movie's supposed to take place at this point, or is what we've heard that, uh, you know, he's still like black ops kind of thing that she's, you know, working with maybe an early Argus type deal. I'm curious. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt, you know, let's, uh, do something cool with it. Um, so yeah, while we're talking about, all right, here's, here's one. Uh, Um, no, you go ahead. I'm too tired. You lead. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, the, the Shazam logo was just released recently. It looks sweet. So what do you think? <laughs> <coughs> I think it looks pretty cool. You know, I'm pulling it up right now. It's on my phone here. Um, you know, it's nothing too over the top. It's just right, I think, for Shazam. Ed, big Z. Uh, yeah, and it's got the lightning bolt behind it. Big Z on the lightning bolt. And then it's got the exclamation point and says, 2019 only in theaters. So... I think it looks cool. The one thing, yeah, me too. The one thing about Shazam is I don't care if it's the main villain. Nope, don't mind. Just I really would like to see, um, even if it's a post-credit scene, The Rock as Black Adam. Yeah, that would be good. I mean, even as a post-credit scene, it could just be a stinger from possibly the past. Ex- exactly. Just just something. Where we at least get to see him in costume as the character before, like, he never does it. <laughs> kind of like we don't know what's yeah. going to happen with Deathstroke, Joe Manganiello, but at least we got that one scene. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, let's see, we've got a New Gods fourth world movie <laughs> in the works. <laughs> Yeah, the director, her name, Ava Duvarney. Ava, yeah, Duvarney. No, something like that. I've seen her work in Selma. I saw that film. I refuse to see a wrinkle in time. It looks horrible, except it has my man Chris Pratt in it, which sucks because I would see it for him. But it just looks bad. But a New Gods film, okay. Like, it's nothing I really wanted. I mean, but if I get to see Dark Side, and then they kind of bring it back around, and like maybe we get more of the background of Steppenwolf, so that if you watch Justice League, it makes more sense. Um, I'm interested in Big Barda and Mr. Mirror. Yeah, that's right. There, yeah, there's there's a lot of um, the Fourth World is is a whole set of mythology um, of its own. Um, lots of characters. And that was actually my thought about it was that, you know, being a fourth world movie, you know, being about the new gods, that the focus is not going to be on high father and dark side. The focus will be on characters like Big Barda and Mr. Miracle and, you know, Orion and Calabac, uh, you know, lower tier people. But you would definitely be able to see, you know, dark side with the introduction of Steppenwolf into justice league you know there's a connection they introduce now they have something to pay off you know where he comes from and and what the what the apocalyptans uh what dark sides uh overall uh goals are it's just galactic domination i don't think so it's, it's usually a little little bit more than just galactic domination he's he control you know Exactly. I'm curious. You know, I'll give it a shot. I hope that they'll at least show Steppenwolf, even if it's just like a an image or something, just to kind of really show people how it links up, who the new gods are and everything, so that you have that right. little bit of connective tissue. Um, definitely going to be heavy on CG. So. Yeah, that'll be... I, I assume that would be an expensive movie. doesn't seem like Warner Brothers pulling the pulling the reins back on some stuff. You know, they're going to produce some new gods. <laughs> I really think I'm okay. I'll tell you right now that just the idea of a live action granny goodness scares me. Granny, like Ugh. the best granny was Ed Asner 
voicing Granny Goodness on Superman the Animated Series because it was the creepiest thing ever. Kind of, yeah, he was perfect. Um, and then, of course, they had Granny in Smallville, and she was creepy. So just thinking about Granny, I'm already scared. <laughs> You know, it was kind of funny. I heard somebody talk about it. It kind of came down the line. I heard it on another. It might have been Holy Batcast that were talking about it, but it would be interesting if um, Tyler Perry were to play a Granny Goodness. Yeah. Kind of along the lines of an Ed Asner guy playing a female type role, but, you know. Yeah, but he's too comma like i need someone that's gonna make me feel like creepily uncomfortable i'd even be fine with them getting somebody than having someone else do the voice you know like yeah. in something or i mean with digital technology they could just change the voice alter the voice drop the voice whatever you know mm-hmm. um because that's, granny's just a well you know a lot of the stuff he did a lot of the stuff that Todd perry does you know there's a lot of comedy but there is also quite a few um very heavy and uh, um, very strong thematic um, aspects to a lot of his films. So he's definitely, you know, definitely has a serious streak. And I mean, be interesting for, but definitely Granny Goodness has to be like super creepy. Yes. I totally agree. Um, I am hoping for, the rumor to be true that an Aquaman teaser will be released. Is it at WonderCon? Soon. Yeah. Yeah, soon, I think. Uh, this weekend, perhaps. That would be amazing. It, no confirmation, but they do say soon. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> speculation was WonderCon. I mean, they got good clout. I feel like, in a lot of ways, I almost feel like, in Justice League, Aquaman... And Flash were very underutilized. Um, I think they could have done more. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm kind of hoping in that respect, in that respect or aspect, that um, they were underutilized. Next film in line on the slate, and they also do have Flash lined up. They have the directors. I think they're trying push forward with the Flash movie. So, yeah. hoping that, you know, it was for a purpose, that they were underutilized for a reason. Yeah, I'll go with you. I just, you know, um, now, I wanted to bring this one up, because I know that you're excited about it, but Jason Todd's coming to the Titans TV series. Yes. Yes, I am very excited. Honestly, for me, uh, uh, I'm a, I'm a fan of the entire Bat family, um, you know, always have been. But uh, since Under the Red Hood came out, God, um, such, a, such a great film. I mean, the book is good, but the movie yes. is just so good. Oh yeah, the the movie is excellent. I mean, it is so it is so well acted, and you know, it's it can be difficult to to especially with superhero um, fare to be to to make that emotional connection um through through animation uh and voice work but they really did it with under the red hood um uh, so but uh yeah, jason top red the, hood is is definitely one of my favorite members as of you know red hood days no um, we, we can we haven't got any thing. casting for it yet we just got the announcement the character will be there so we don't know who's going to be Jason Todd, do we? No, I don't think they've said anything uh, on who it's going to be. Uh, no casting that I'm aware of, uh, but they do have a specific episode named Jason Todd. So it'd be pretty hard not to be. Yeah, there's a specific episode named J- called Jason Todd. So, I mean, it'd be, I'm sure somewhere down the line, you know, we've got, we've got a little while, I think, you know, late this year before they launched the DC streaming service. I know. So I'm, they've got I'm, a lot. I'm do. so waiting for that because there's stuff I debate whether or not to buy like some older things. And I'm like, will that be on the streaming service? Hmm. Right. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. 
Um, you know, I wanted to, t- I had Krypton in my notes and I, you know, I want to talk, talk about it, but we, the, the premiere is on this evening. So, um, but did you watch the, uh, making a legend feature at the extended feature at, that they released? The, oh yeah, the 22 minute long thing. It's on YouTube about Krypton. Oh yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. I think we shared it on the oh. Facebook page and it's definitely, I think, <laughs> Something everyone should see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of history about Superman in it as well, but they also talk a lot about the, about the show. How they, how they bring in that it's not really, um, say what it was meant to be early on as a prequel to Man of Steel, but they use many aspects from various, um, various, incarnations of Krypton and the mythology of Superman to bring Krypton to life. Uh, history from the comics, history from different movies and television shows. Um, I, I, from what they say, it's, it's a pretty good amalgam to really bring the world of Krypton to life. I'm, I'm excited, you know, cause I think as much as I love the crystals and everything like that, there's been different versions, and I liked a lot of what I saw in Man of Steel. I kind of wanted to see more. So I'm really interested in Krypton, the series. Oh, absolutely. All right, here. Yeah, well, you know, the from my understanding, the early descriptions of Krypton back in, like, the late, you know, in the early days of Superman, the early descriptions of Krypton were much more rugged and, and harsh, like the version Man of Steel was. Not the 78 clean white Donner, uh, Krypton. Yeah. And I kind of wonder where that originated from. I need to research that. Now I think about it. I've never really thought about it more. Um, (sighs) all right. Hold on. We're going to pull up this real quick. We'll do this. We don't have to. They've, all right. Years ago, back in 2007, I want to say. Yeah. That sounds right. For some reason, DC was going to do a Justice League movie, roughly titled Justice League Mortal, that had nothing to do with, at the time, we had Batman Begins in 2005 and Superman Returns in 2006. They were going to do a separate movie with all the Justice League characters. So, um, a while back, we got to look at the actress who was playing Wonder Woman. They released her back in 2015. They actually released her costume photo. And we just got our first look at DJ Katrona, which I only know him from more recently where he played one of the Gecko brothers on From Dust Till Dawn, the TV series. Oh, never seen it. Um, but yeah, we got to see his Superman outfit and it's very blue. Yes, very, very blue. Uh, blue all the way down from the shoulders to the boots. He's got a couple of red lines on his boots. At the foot He's of his boots. He's got a gold boots. belt in the middle. Yeah, at the foot of his boots, like the sole. And, you know, he's got the... It's not a bad costume. Um, I think the area where he would have the trunks were... It looks almost like he's wearing blue trunks. Yeah, and in, in the photo they released, it does. And it makes me wonder if this was just like a costume test on the design. Like it wasn't the like last official, hey, we're going to shoot tomorrow costume. But I actually like the boots. Um, It's very almost rebirth if it had the red at the top. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. And then the, uh, I don't the like design the, on the shoulders. Yeah, I don't like And it. the S, the way... Yeah, the way the red comes over, that's almost reminiscent of, like, injustice. injustice. And, I mean, I waited at first before, like, talking to you about this because <laughs> I want to make sure it was official. But I guess it was. So. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, uh, it's kind of up there with, uh, did you ever see the Superman uh, flyby costume? Trying to think, I, I'm aware of Superman Flyby, but no, I don't think I. 
I don't think I recall seeing. Hold on. Let me see if I can find the prototype. All right. I'm going to send it to you. Okay. One of the few, uh, what do you call it? Images. There's not many. It's a lot of, uh, okay, I sent it. But that was, you know, like okay. the, the costume that was made for testing for the Superman film that sounded horrible that was going to be directed or written by J.J. Abrams. Um, he wrote it. The costume's not bad looking. Um, <coughs> but what's funny is both Brandon Routh and Henry Cavill audition for Superman Flyby. Oh yeah, there's a picture of them. Oh, that's that's not too bad actually. It's not too bad. It just um, the costume would have worked, I think, better than what we got with Brandon Routh. But <laughs> even there, they can tell they were starting to like, hey, let's lose the Trumps. But yeah, they they kind of made them subtle. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's something that they've been trying to get rid of. It seems like in live action for a little bit. And, uh, uh, but they're bringing it back in the, in the comics, apparently. So. And speaking of comics, we have some other variant covers released. Yep. Or at okay. least one. Right? No, we got one. We got the two, three. We got three. Three. I can think of two offhand. I'll send you all three that I have. But all right. Okay. Well, I know the one is is the Dan Jurgens, um, the the Superman throughout the years from from the explosion of Krypton to like Action Comics number one Superman. Then they have. Um, oh, let me go up the list of them. What's What's interesting is if you count. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Superman. If you don't count the ship, there we go. Yeah, we've got the ship. We've got like the very first Superman, and then it goes on through the decades. We come all the way to the death of Superman, then the black, the black and silver. Then they got the new Fifty Two Superman, where we finally lose the trunks, and then. Coming up to Action Comics 1000, Superman, the Bendis Superman, as it looks. Um, it's got the red trunks back. It looks good. I mean... and then, I do like that. Okay, so we're talking about the, the coming back Superman. There's the cover where it looks like he's beating up the Lex suit. I can't remember who drew it, but it looks intense. Yes. Is that what it is? A Lex suit? I, th- I thought it might have been like a giant Brainiac android or something. It might be. It's some sort of machine. Yes. And then you just sent me this image here, and it looks like an early days Superman where he's attacking mobsters. <laughs> like a straight out of Action Comics number one. Yeah. I love Where it. he was fighting criminals of the day. I Not supervillains, just criminals. I do. That, that looks really good. It's It's updated. You know the artistic style is 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 very new, but the um, the suit um, is definitely very classic. Plus the atmosphere of of fighting mobsters with Tommy guns. And then the last thing for comics is DC is releasing Black Label, and we have a poster for Frank Miller and John Ramada Jr. doing a Superman Year One. It's just kind of Clark in the sky. With his glasses falling, mm-hmm. so I don't really know much about this black label. But I, what are your thoughts on Frank Miller? Well, you know, I, I mean, black label. I don't know about. I, I mean, just some kind of out of continuity stories for different characters. But um, Frank Miller, uh, I've enjoyed a lot of what Frank Miller has written over the years. And, uh, he has gotten the stigma over the years that his, that he doesn't like Superman. Um, and I think, you know, he, he wanted to do this, you know, he wanted to do a suit, write a Superman, um, show that he does care about the character. Um, you know, he could be very, um, he definitely has his own way of writing, you know? Yes. Uh, evident with, uh, Batman Year One, um, The Dark Knight Returns, 
uh, Strikes Again. I haven't read The Master Race yet. Me neither. I just I feel like he Frank definitely Miller, has specific. He really worked in a darker time. Like, did you ever read Batman All Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder? I heard that was good. I have not. It's weird, like, because there's parts that are good, and there's parts that are just crazy. And I feel like Frank right. Miller's dark take on. Things, I heard that as well. Just <laughs> it doesn't resonate as well nowadays as it used to. I think right, the right. period of the ultraviolet 80s were great, but now we don't want that. And I think that's some things that people had a hard time with Batman v Superman is, I mean, so much of Batman in that is straight up a Frank Miller Batman. But people who don't yeah. read the comics don't know that, and they had a problem with it. Yeah, people only know Christian Bale. Christian, that, that's what that's the new newest Batman. You know, I mean, before Keaton, only people knew Adam West and they thought Batman was a joke. You know, now even even people who like Bale think Keaton was a joke, you know, as dark as Tim Burton's films were. So, you know, the the, the characters all they all lend themselves, all lend themselves to so many various voices, you know, so many various takes on the characters. You know, as long as a certain spirit stays alive with the character, Agreed. you know, they, they should they should be interpreted. And, and not everybody's going to like every interpretation, but I don't see the reason why they why people need to tear them down either. That's just people just want to complain about something, you know. Oh, yeah. But um, I am looking forward to year one. I will certainly be pick, picking that up. Oh, I will too, just because I'll give it a shot. Giving it a look. And we'll probably review it. But we are less than a month now from Action Comics 1000. I know. I'm so excited. You're reviewing Krypton. <gasps> yes. And I have with me, as always now, since Jania is busy, the Superman Red, Mr. James Cole. Welcome, James. Hey, how's it going? Going well, Happy to man. be filling in. Um. <clears throat> so when we started this podcast, we were first the last daughter of Krypton because it was going to be more Supergirl focused, and then we wanted to retool it and make it about everything Super Superman, Supergirl, and we we chose Krypton Report because they had also announced the Krypton series. Now, if memory serves me correct, they had talked a little bit Krypton. After Man of Steel, so it was back in 2013, and then mm-hmm. they had talked more about it in the fall of 2014, which was when, um, you know, Gotham premiered, and still no Krypton, and then Supergirl's come and is on season three now, still no Krypton, then Krypton was supposed to premiere in the fall of 2017, because I have the teaser trailer they released that says 2017. And then no, and now here we are, spring of 2018, and we finally have Krypton. Now, one thing we're going to talk about during this is when the show was originally uh, conceived, it was going to be more prequel to Man of Steel. And I feel like what we're getting is this beautiful kind of hybrid of Man of Steel Krypton, some Richard Donner Krypton, some comic book Krypton, so a very kind of nice amalgam of the Kryptons um, that we've seen in other works. What do you What do you think? Uh, well, yeah, I, exactly that, um, an, an amalgam of of everything Krypton. Um, you know, the only the almost the only stories of Krypton is is about its destruction. Uh, so to see life on Krypton, um, it's really cool. Uh, you know, a lot of the set designs are, are quite, um, reminiscent of Man of Steel. You know, lots of the, lots of the, the, the curvy rooms and, and, um, the you know, grittier tone. Yeah. Um, which, you know, from what, um, from what I have read, what I've come about is that, uh, the Krypton from Man of Steel is more, um, 
is more in line with the original ideas of what Krypton was, of more, more of a harsh environment, not the crystalline, clean, yeah. um, everything straight, like like Donner had come up with. Now, when I'm trying to, I'm working backwards here. I'm trying to realize. I was thinking, when did that first appear? Was that a first appeared in the comics? And I haven't done as much research as I would like to have. Um, because it feels like once Superman the movie hit with that, that's the imagery we've got. In the comics, it adapted to it. I mean, <clears throat> every live action version of Superman up until <sighs> Man of Steel, but even Supergirl kind of took some aspects from that, um, world had been very much oh. in line with that kind of imagery. Oh, absolutely. Once, once Superman, the movie, you know, came out, I mean, that, I mean, that put Superman mainstream and, you know, everybody's idea of Krypton and what it should be was, you know, was crystals and like an ice planet and stuff like that, which speaking, well, I'll, I'll get into that as soon as we start. So let's go ahead and start. Um, so in on the episode. Let's start on the episode. Um, okay. Episode one. All right. Well. Pilot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> pilot. Yes. <clears throat> um, uh, the opening. I, I like the opening. Uh, kind of a uh, monologue to Kal El. Um, as you know, talking like talking to him in the future. But uh, what I liked when I first saw it was that. The planet seems to, seems to, uh, rotate with, you know, rotate and always face the same side. Uh, like half of the planet was ice and the other half of the planet was, um, was, was more sunny, more bright. Um, you know, it, it, it literally had a divide on the outlands and, and the cities. Hmm. I didn't notice that, but that is a really cool observation that really plays into like what we were talking about, about like the amalgam of what we're looking at, you know, with um, the um, of just the mixed opinions of the two versions. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that can play into that. Now, I, okay. I do not like that Superman's grandfather's name is Sigel. Okay? Correct. Because if you say it too soon, too quick, it sounds like you're saying Sigel. And when I say <laughs> that, I think of Jason Sigel. You know, maybe it's a playoff Siegel for, um, you know, Siegel and Schuster. Oh, yeah. Um, but the thing is, like, I thought Val L was a really cool name. And then like if that was Jarrell's father and then him naming his son Cal L, keeping that A L sound would have been cool because this very much seems like it's a show about grandfathers and their grandsons. Yeah. Since um Sigel's father didn't really play a huge role as much as they talk about Val. Because let's just talk, like, the opening is Val L being on trial and losing his rank. You know, they were, their coat of arms and everything was taken from them and they were unranked. And I thought the, the idea of the class society like that was really interesting. Really seeing that there's, like, bottom level Kryptonians and then the hierarchy Kryptonians. Yeah, they, they definitely have a strict caste system so I, in really, place. I really like seeing that. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, Val gets that yeah. taken away because, um, you know, this is like supposedly, what, 200 years roughly before Kal-El and their timing's different. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, their timing of there, there's a issue about that too that I wanted to talk about when we got there. Okay. Um, they sure. seem to live, they seem to live longer lives than their, their life expectancy is, is quite a bit longer, two and a half times longer than what it seems for human life. And I can go with that. I mean, it's also how they measure time. You know, ours about rotation of the sun. 
just like on the other planets in our solar system, one year equivalent is longer or shorter, depending on. Mm -hmm. um, so that doesn't bother me. What uh, one thing I rewatched just out of curiosity, I rewatched Man of Steel um, to pick up just things from the Kryptonian, like the beginning, and then when Jarrell talks Krypton, you know, he talked about that they were already exploring space before artificial population control. Um, but he doesn't ever say that they found other life, um, which is interesting because, you know, the whole yeah. purpose of this is Val saying that there's other life in space and people are basically not believing, but they're all aligning themselves with the voice of Rao, this deity. And I'm not saying, I'm not sure if they're thinking the one with the gold mask is like Rao or the voice of Rao, or if it's a prophet or something. But you have to align yourself with Raoul or Yeah, he, he certainly seems like at least like I don't know, maybe like a like a Pope type figure. You know what I mean? The the person who's you know, closest to Rao. And that that's really the the uh what I picked up from him too. Was yeah, they, they definitely are, are even for being a, a scientifically advanced society um they're still very um very holding on to their their religious beliefs that that religion and science can coexist um at least there to a degree seeing as they sentenced Valel to death for treason now i like everything you said up until Valel's death and treason <laughs> You know, the idea of things living together and um, and everything. I thought that was, you know, that can be very interesting. So the beginning is Seg, which I'm just going to call him Seg because I feel like when I say Segel, I start, it just doesn't sound as great together. So I'm like Seg. Well, that's what they call. Yeah, well, you know, that's what they call everybody. They call uh, Val. They call him Val-El. They just call him Val. Uh, Ter, she calls Terrell, she just calls him Ter, and everybody calls Seg just that, that Seg. Well, also, they kind of, um, I wonder, did they, like, they were in <laughs> class, but were their, their last name, was it completely, like, taken away? Almost as if you're not ranked, you don't have a last name, like a family name. Right. I kind of wonder. Well, they all, they, yeah, I mean, uh, a name, I mean, they lose the name, they lose the, the guild symbol, uh, you know, the father tells him that, you know, being in possession of that symbol is, is against the law. So, like, they will wipe out everything. Name, guild, uh, house, the whole. Some scary stuff. But, all right. Oh. So, I will say one thing. I wanted not to listen to any other opinions about this till we um, got to record. Mm -hmm. I did listen to my good friend, Mr. Zach Moore from the Always Hold On to Smallville. Him and Lance talk about it. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And I, I, what's funny is a lot of the things they were saying, I was sitting there listening like, oh, my gosh, that's what I was thinking. So anything that I yeah. eat can also be found on the review of the Always Hold On to Smallville because I don't want people to think I'm stealing their ideas. Um, <clears throat> but we cut to, was it like 14 years, 14 cycles or whatever? later and it's uh yeah 14 years later seg is fighting in the bar and it kind of reminded me of star trek you know chris pine jim uh -huh. scene and they're hustling we find out there's a curfew um, guards pick on him and i mean in, if you look at this and you look at a 24 hour like or a one day time frame everything seg goes through he <laughs> Let's see, I'm trying to remember. So he does that, and then his father, like, I thought this was going to play more into the plot, but his father left his medication, which I thought was interesting. Being the advanced society, I thought part of the artificial population control thing was wiping out diseases and things like that. Um, but his father right. forgot his medication, and Seg was taking it to him because his father worked for the guild, which is extremely degrading. Um, right. Yeah. And we have uh, along the lines of like disease and stuff there, you know, I mean, you could, you could still think that perhaps, um, uh, 
ailments from age as opposed to just, um, you know, sickness. True. True. Could be, or it could be, you know, could be something. Class system back to, um, something in that, but because we haven't got into the extent yet of like what the artificial population control, um, gets into, and we'll get there. But we see that someone right. has a bomb, which is like in their arm. And Seg sees it and like tackles the guy. And then, dude, I literally went, holy crap, when they shot the dude's arm up to get rid of the bomb. Yeah, that was, that was pretty crazy. Like, I wonder how, like, advanced science or whatever, but yeah, no explanation as to why. I mean, like, he rolled up his sleeve and it's just Kryptonian, like, flashing on his arm. And yeah, they, he's down. They step on his arm and just just blow it away. It was crazy. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been a little sick the last couple of days and I oh. cough a couple of times. Please. I'm talking to the man who can't get rid of this cold because he lives in Ohio in the crappy weather. Um, but then before right. that, <laughs> that Seg is a genius, of course. It's a family thing for the science. And he can be reinstated in the guild, but he would be under a different name like kind of like adopted and i thought that was interesting because that like changes the idea of like the strict bloodlines and he would be um vex and basically gets offered a daughter to marry to bind with to use their terminology mm -hmm. um and then keeping with their theme we'll jump to the side plot in a second um him and Cora, or no, not Cora. What is her name? Vex. I can't think. It's too late. Nissa. Nissa. That's Nissa right. Vex. Which is interesting in its own right. Um, they you they go and they prick their fingers and their blood in the machine, which is in the Genesis Chamber. Another Man of Steel, uh, movie and comic yeah. book reference. And they see what their son would be, his life, and what he'd be molded for, and basically. Their unborn child's entire life is played out right there in front of their eyes. Yeah, like shown how shown him how he grows, uh, the fact that he's going to be in the lawmakers guild, the fact that he's going to live for 173 cycles. Like, like there is no, there is absolutely no choice in in who or what what he what he's there for. And I so I, th I found that extremely interesting because it's back to certain themes that we saw um, in Man of Steel. And, yeah. The yeah. um the interesting thing, though, like just for Nyssa, like I'm kind of surprised that they went with Nyssa the way they had the way they spelled it with a Y. Yeah. Just because like um, Light Azad, who will get to um, her name is spelled L-Y. T.A., I would have thought, like, maybe the wise that her name would not be Nissa, more like uh, Nisa or something. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree, because spelling is very... The choices you make in the spelling is very um, specific. Mm-hmm. But speaking of spelling, which I, I, have most, I have most of it done, um, I went back and did did the research, um, took screenshots of all the Kryptonian, like in the beginning when they go to Candor, where they open up on Candor City and it's spelled out in Kryptonian. Um, and then it, and then it, tra you know, it, it translates to English, but all that spelling is, is correct from, um, the comic books, um, letter for letter. Uh, Candor City, um, 14 years later, uh, the military guild, the lawmakers guild, and the Genesis chamber. Plus, I'm even trying to translate like the bar name. Mm, nice. So, uh, yeah, I just want to, I, I want to do that. I want to put it up on the social media page for, um, you know, just, just the accuracy, the time they, the, the level of detail they took to, um, develop the show you know that it's not just kryptonian symbols scattered all over for no reason just to make it look like krypton 
Right, like they're not just randomly putting script up there. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, that's Krypton writing. Yeah. So, and that Krypton writing what? itself. Uh, Actually, considering um, one thing real quick about the writing, you know, the S we seen in Smallville mm-hmm. is that's that's the Kryptonian S, which, which is actually the pentagram and with the the eight the eight inside the the full um, symbol all the way around, it, which is it's like the eight inside of the pentagram. Um, that actually stand that's the actual S, that's the letter S, but their symbol. Their, the house L symbol is an S. So their S is actually the eight inside the pentagram, whereas the family crest is like our human S. So it actually makes a separation that, you know, S doesn't just mean S. Yeah. Like, it kind of makes me mad, like, the whole, it's not an S. Well, here, it's an S. Well, that's only in the United States, English. Okay, mm-hmm. just kind of like I don't know how familiar you are with Led Zeppelin <clears throat> when they did their symbols, and there's one symbol that looked like the word Zoso, but, it was, mm-hmm. but it's a symbol, but everyone mm-hmm. called it like the Zoso, but it's not supposed to be that, you know. It's just, and that's kind of what I think about, like, yeah, it was <laughs> R S, but to them it's not an S. And I mean, we know that when Superman was first created, the S was for Superman. Okay, yeah. But they didn't want to make it tacky, and they over time made it the symbol, the family symbol, and hope so it, it's adapted. But yeah, I mean, it's an alien language that they're writing. Just looking at different languages around the world, like the way things are written, sometimes isn't the way we think they would be pronounced because of our language. So that always annoys me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um. So. Now, talking about Light of Zod, we find out that the House of Zod is part of a special, what do they call themselves, the tip of the spear, elite guard. I did, um, yeah, uh, they they call themselves um, uh, Sagittarius Zod. So, Sagittarius Zod. I, I wrote it down. She, she, bro- she brought up Sagittarius Zod. Um, um, and then she talked about them being the tip of the spear, uh, that other, um, Nate, that other city states and factions like Black Zero. So it seems like there's, you know, civil warring on the planet that Krypton isn't, is not a planet united. It is a group of nations, as it were, warring against each other. And uh, I thought that was interesting. And then we see that, oh, I can't remember her name, but she's also referred to as Primus Zod at one point, because I think she's the leader of the House of Zod at the moment. Um, yeah, they. Um, her name was uh, Allura Zod. Which, okay, come on, seriously, we can't pick a different name. We have to use a name that's already associated with somebody. Like, we can't um, make more original names. Right. I seen an article that she's no longer supposed to be Alora Zod. Um, that she's supposed to be Jaina Zod. So I'm kinda wondering if that's not gonna be something that's changed down the line that that was something maybe missed in the pilot after they had already filmed and, and yeah. So I uh, I'm I'ma keep an eye on that moving forward. But she she fights Light Azad and stabs her in the hand. Yeah, her mother. <laughs> her mother. She stabbed a knife right through her hand. Which was crazy. Um <clears throat> And then we find out that Seg and Lyda are a thing. And they're in love. So there's our, there's our, and they're movie. both at Romeo and Juliet. It's like a love, right? It's like a love square because he's intended for somebody. She's intended for somebody. They're both to be bound to somebody else, but they, they love each other. And I think that kind of goes back to where we're going to go with the house of L being about choice 
and trying to re reestablish that in Krypton culture. Um, so, all right, so we're <laughs> jumping around, but basically, um, Adam Strange, okay? Not a character I'm super familiar with. I know the name. I know he's a time traveler. That's about it. Um, I wish it was Booster Gold. Throwing that out there. Uh, at least a more named character that can be more fun. Because Booster sometimes is an idiot. Um, mm -hmm. You know, someone that kind of makes more sense than Adam Change. Or a Legionnaire would have been cool. All right. Lightning Lad. Or... I mean, I like the fact that they used uh, a, a fairly unknown character. I mean, it kind of gives them some freedom. Um, but, I mean, like, to my knowledge, is is Booster Gold most... I mean, I know he's all about the time travel and stuff like that, but does he travel... Is he a hero, like, among the cosmos? Because I know my limited knowledge on Adam Strange is that he is a he's a hero not only through time but also uh across the galaxy for um um being transported via zeta tubes around around the universe. See, I don't know. I just think it's one of those things like you hear Adam Strange and then anytime there's names I think that can be easily confused with other names, it common like the simple people can get confused who don't follow comics as hardcore as we do. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just one of those things. I'm just like, okay. Um, yeah, but he comes, he sees Adam. <laughs> no, go ahead. I'll th that's where I was going. Oh. Go for it. Oh yeah. He, well, you know, he sees Adam strange and he's right. Points at his hat. Is, who are you? Is that a guild? Is that a guild symbol? No, man, it's the Detroit Tigers. And he thought that was hilarious. Told him he was from planet Earth. And so that right there makes you wonder, okay, <laughs> so who discovers Earth? Is it Jor-El or... Um, now is it going to be Sego? Um that discovers Earth. Because sometimes they, they have said that Jarrell was the one who discovered Earth. But there's been so many different versions of that, you know, it's kinda can be different. Right. Well, the the limited time, the fact that Jorel was such a a grand scientist and, you know, discovered the Phantom Zone and I mean, how many other things is he credited for in his in his lifetime and he's the last generation of L on the planet, like he advanced their science so much in his life. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, you know, Adam Strange basically pulls, <clears throat> I'm here from the future. Um, your grandson's going to be the greatest hero of the world. The universe has ever seen. Um, he's in danger. And some, you know, uh, he alludes to basically, it seems like Brainiac's coming for him. Okay. And I kind of think to myself, like, all right, so is this Brainiac from the future who gets beat by Superman, decides to travel back in time to stop Krypton or everything? So is there technically two Brainiacs right now? The one from the future who's in the past and the regular Brainiac? Hmm. You following me on my time travel logic? Yeah, I, I, I am following you. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that, yeah, that's a, you know, time travel aspects can, um, can, can make things very confusing. Um, it'd be kind of neat. So un, until it's into, spelled out, and, uh, the eradicator. <coughs> That's something I'd like to see. Right. The way they've changed and done the Eradicators now. It's being like these. Mm -hmm. uh, they kind of remind me more of like the Manhunters. Um, so I kind of like to see them show up on this series. But that side note. So yeah, so that kind of was like the time travel 
You know, and of course, just him being there, Adam Strange talking to Seg, that can mess up the future. Um, mm hmm But he brings and shows him the cape of Superman that's slowly disappearing. There's our ticking clock. Our disappearing cape as yeah. the timeline can be changed. And he gives him a, what looks like, to me, a hybrid of the green crystal and the man of steel key. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, except for being green. Um, yeah, it did remind me of the man of steel crystal, but, or uh, man of steel key, but it also, you know, reminded me of, of the Donner crystal technology. Just slide it in and, you know, information and whatnot. So yeah, it was, it seemed like a hybrid between the two. Man, I feel like there's so much that was thrown at us in this pilot, but we find out that he goes to tell his parents they don't want to answer him about it. Uh, Seg goes out, gets in a fight with the police. And, and his mom, parents are keeping it from him. Yeah, his mom shows up and take, they find out. And they go and they find out that basically the fortress is a family thing. That Val El had his own fortress. This is the key where he would do his research. And you know there's going to be some big undercover thing that the government's trying to keep hidden. And I'm almost suspicious that the voice of Ral isn't an alien of some sort. Um, yeah. That mask. And that's why they're trying not to prove aliens exist or whatever. Um, <clears throat> something, but so we, we, we get a fortress, which is really cool. Um, and there's some cool concept, like sci-fi ideas I have about this, but I'll save those as the show progresses. Um, okay. they, and then basically they stole a, sh a ship to get there. The police tracked the ship. The mom hides seg. And wipes the nav system so they can at least find the location of the fortress. And then the police basically take her before the council. They don't want it to be recorded that Seg was there because they really want Seg to be back in the guild. But then Tear comes forward and says that he was with her because they, they know that somebody else was with her in the vessel. And then Seg watches both of his parents murdered by uh, what is called her leader Zod. <laughs> Mama Zod. Light Zod's mom. Um, <laughs> Mama Zod. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mama Zod. We'll yeah, she, she, <laughs> yeah, it seemed, it seemed like she was kind of doing a, a mercy killing for the safety of her daughter because of the relationship. Um, they're covering for him, you know, his relationship with her. She would obviously, and especially since the mother claimed Black Zero, mm -hmm. you know, because well, because obviously claiming Black Zero, like, they're not going to do any, like, it's, it's like, that's a bad thing, you know? Uh, she, she claimed Black Zero, so it's, um, you know, they're, they're going to arrest her and anybody she, ha she has association with her husband, her son, they're going to be, um, you know, scrutinized or under a microscope or so. You know, she she killed them to protect her daughter in the long run and to, you know, prevent them from what could be worse than death that they discussed while she was while she was jailed before her trial. Let's jump back real quick. Um, at the beginning, Val was like banished to it wasn't the Phantom Zone, but like a portal open and he like fell into like the abyss. Um, and now I do want to say, I like the fact that Val was wearing like a red cape and like a blue suit. Just on that. Yeah. Matter. So jumping back forward, sex, he's both of was... parents murdered. And then him and Lydazod basically break up. And, um, he's in the fortress standing on top of a giant S as, um, well, he goes, 
he goes to his friend, which we didn't bring up. How did you, how did you like, how'd you like his friend? His friend was all right. It was just the character. <laughs> it makes me wonder if he'll continue to be there or not for Seg to interact with other than his family, just to kind of give him some sort of what he's up to in the, the bottom. Uh, <clears throat> now, so it was on a, on a scale, how would you rate the pilot? Um, well, I, on a scale, um, one to 10, one to 10. Okay. Um, one to 10, I would give it an, an 8.5. Um, I'm there with you there. Uh, some pilots, there was, amazing, I mean, and some are just kind of like exposition dump. And I think this yeah. falls in between. Uh, yeah, it was it was definitely uh in between. Um there was some action, uh there was some world building, some character introductions. Um, you know, they've only got ten episodes to um to to unfold this story. And um th- there's obviously quite a quite a bit. Everybody's got an agenda. Um seems like Nizza has an agenda. Uh obviously her father being the lawmaker, um, the voice of Rao. Um, you know, he's got a mask with six faces, three on the front and three on the back. Um, you know, like all like the all seeing uh, voice of Rao. Um, I mean, the cine- the cinematography was really good. Oh, it's, um, it's very, the acting was it's very epic. It's very uh, cinematic. Yeah. Very large, very large in scale, but it, it, it draws you into the world. Um, you know, it it seems like a real place. And like the one thing, like, um, like, like always hold on to Smallville brought up was, was their dialect and how they talk. You know, I mean, sure, they all sound, sound British, but you know, I mean, they're all, one dialect. They all come from the same area, the same region. So they all, you know, have a similar dialect when they speak. But also, um, in Smallville, Julian Sands Jarrell tells Clark that, you know, that, that it's a mistake to think that Kryptonians were much different than, than humans, that they have the same range of emotions and um, ranging from good to cruel, jealousy, you know, all of, they, they run the same gamut of expo, uh, emotions and everything that, that we do. So the fact that, you know, they, they interact and they, and they live similarly to us, you know, it doesn't seem like, doesn't seem like that would be a stretch. Like, why does an alien world, especially when it's been brought up in the past, you know, that, to make them more relatable, I'm sure. But, you know, I mean, are they all cold and, and, you know, bad people, corrupt people, or are there, there good people who, who are emotional and, and, you know, care for one another and all of that? Exactly. I mean, you can't just immediately, uh, they're not Vulcan. You know what I'm saying? Like, to grab a Star Trek yeah. reference. Um, there you Vulcans. go. And I totally forgot what I was going to say. But anyways, I like it. Um, last question here, and it's getting late for us. How do you want the show to end? I have two ways I, I think I'd like to see it end. Option A is with the birth of jor Or option B, you see the birth of jor and then it flashes forward. And we see Jor-El trying to get Kal-El on the ship. And Segel's there old. And um, do you remember the animated series how it's actually Lara's father that like helps um, dupe the police while Jor-El gets to the ship to launch Cal? Something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, where Seg basically... Uh, you know, is basically helping Jarrell. We kind of see that's the, and you know, because they never say in the comics that 
Jarrell's father is dead. I mean, maybe some, but for the most part, it's never brought up. So it'd be kind of mm-hmm. interesting to see Segel kind of wish Kal-El goodbye before Jarrell puts him in the ship and launches him. But that's just kind of um, where I think it, it, if they don't want to do that, like, you know, just the birth of Jarrell, I think would be a good place to kind of stop. But right. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, I mean, the ending of the show, um, um, I mean, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, the ending of the season, oh, um, the of the season. that'll be could be that'll be quite interesting you know i mean one they've got brainiac coming in who's going to prove that valel was right you know um which brainiac i mean his skull ship and the makeup and everything i mean brainiac just looks sick he's he looks amazing oh my gosh if we hadn't already reviewed superman unbound before we would do it now and any <laughs> out there i highly recommend find that animated film and watch it. Yes, yes. It's uh, Superman Unbound is great. And the last Superman standalone animated feature they've done up to this point. Which was five years ago. So oh, man, that was when... That was the t- Man of Steel time, wasn't it? Yeah. Holy crap. They've done a lot of animated stuff since then. Yes, they have. Um, so... You know, the end of the season, I mean, Vex is going to be seriously hurt, um, for, for the part he's played, um, in, in destroying the House of L. Um, plus, you know, where, where does the voice of Rao come in? And, uh, and then everybody's going to know that they're not alone. So, I mean, it really opens up where they're going to be able to go from there I'm if pumped. the show moves on to a second season. I'm pumped. I hope it does get a second season. There's there's some interesting things with time travel, and we're supposed to get something with Doomsday cause, and that whole history with it being the Kryptonian like killer machine thing. So mm, I've okay. got high hopes. <clears throat> well, apparently it, it, uh, it brought the highest ratings for a premiere of a show in like four years on the sci-fi channel because they haven't done anything of quality like it's been recycled stuff or just junk but that's like another <laughs> sharknado yeah i've never seen sharknado I've, seen uh, I've never seen one. any of them <laughs> the one, because my brother-in-law and sister-in-law loved them so they made us watch the first one so we had a big like family get together to watch the second one and i mm-hmm. was like okay i'll do it for the family and right that was it uh. Well, I've never seen it, and I have not seen a lot of what sci-fi has done in a long time. Yes, so same here. Uh, this will, obviously, for the show, but for the enjoyment of of watching it, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Krypton. Uh, you know, I I'm not. I may have thought of of um, some similarities to other things after it was all said and done, but you know. Watching the show, it, it had me engrossed, and and I enjoyed it the whole time I was watching it. I think it's hard to do sci-fi anymore that doesn't feel like something else. Right. That's so much great sci-fi. And that's, I'm not even talking about just the main two with Star Trek and Star Wars. I mean, there's been a lot of other stuff, too, I think, that's come along that's just... Um, it's hard to come up with something completely, you know, new and feels more fresh and original so yeah well honestly i mean com- compared to a lot of stuff out there i mean krypton is is a whole lot more original you know being an amalgam of movies and and comics and um you know stuff from prior television shows i mean being able to to meld all of that stuff together kind of makes it pretty original on its own. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're right. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah. Anything else you want to say out there, my good friend? Um, uh, just that uh, I checked out the trailer for what's left in season one. And um, 
you know, they, they put a couple of clips out there on the app and I checked those out. So I'm looking forward to what's coming. Um, you know, plus there's been many, many stories of Brainiac going to Krypton for, you know, for his, for his purpose, for his, his collecting purposes have, having nothing to do with, um, Superman. So I kind of like um, that better. I just like the idea yeah, of the I'm destroyer actually, of worlds that his programming, like, it'd be even cool to get more in the origin of Brainiac if they wanted to. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears> right. <throat> where he comes from. I'm at, right. I'm actually wondering if, if the, the time travel aspect for Adam Strange, if he isn't completely wrong in the matter that Brainiac hasn't come back in time to, um, stop the birth of kal or if this is just like one of the previous similar previously told stories that Brainiac did go to Krypton and you know collected Kandor City and all of that, you know. Um did you ever read Convergence? Uh no, not yet. Okay, so um, Convergence working, we, we're slowly we're, working my way through we're introduced to a character called Telos, who's basically, if you think of Brainiac as Galactus, Telos is kind of like the Silver Surfer. Um, okay. That could be an interesting character to see show up. Hmm. So, just throwing that out there. What's your thoughts? I, I think I remember, I think I remember some talk, uh, of that on the world's finest a while, a uh, good while back. Oh, yeah. Me and Phil were, before it started, we started talking about what that could do. And, how if convergence could um, reshape the new fifty two at the time, and in the long mm-hmm. run, it's because of convergence. Um, we got rebirth. So, all right. Well, thank you, James. Where can people find you online, buddy? Uh, I am James Cole the uh, third. I I I. Uh, on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Krypton Report. You can also email us at kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. If you get a chance to go over to iTunes, please leave us a review to help us get better. If you're an Amazon shopper, just remember you can go to southgatemediagroup.com. There's a portal log into Amazon and you'll shop into your account just regular, but it also helps keep all the podcasts on and helps keep Southgate running. Remember, look up in the sky.